In this tutorial, I want to demo one of the most amazing, game-changing additions to Shotcut in recent years. Shotcut finally has true motion tracking, and I want to show you how it works, so stay tuned. I'm just a normal person with no video editing background who wanted to start making YouTube videos and maybe cool transitions and effects. I don't really plan on being a professional video editor, so I was looking for a free, easy to learn video editing software. Luckily, I stumbled on Shotcut, a free open source video editing program that can do many of the tricks you can do on more enterprise video editors like Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, but with a much simpler and leaner interface, thus dramatically shortening the learning curve. It just takes using your imagination. So let's learn together. This tutorial will be done on Shotcut version 23.05.14. Make sure you have at least this version or you won't see the motion tracking functionality. One thing to note at the very beginning, the motion tracker is not a standalone filter. On its own, it does nothing. The motion tracking filter needs to be paired with another applicable filter. So far, as of Shotcut version 23.05.14, these are the following filters that work with motion tracking. But let's assume more and more will be added in future versions. The filters are corner pin, crop rectangle, GPS text, mask simple shape, size, position, and rotate, size and position the GPU version, spot remover, text rich, text simple, and timer. I'm not going to demo every single filter that works with motion tracking because it's going to take too long. And basically, functions behave the same way when paired with the motion tracking filter. For this demo, I will show you motion tracking using the text simple filter. But if you want a demo for one of the others, let me know which filter in the comments and I will see if there's enough of a demand for that demo to happen. I'm going to start with this running video I downloaded. First, let's drag this video on the timeline. Then I'm going to find a good frame that I'm going to capture. So this should be a good spot. Then I'm going to go to the Filters tab and look for Motion Tracker. Make sure you have the Show Preview checkbox checked so you can gauge how well the tracking is doing. You'll know the Show Preview is on because you're going to see a box with a green outline around it. Eventually, when you're ready to export, you're going to have to uncheck this. For now, while the preview is on, I'm going to modify the box using the handles to encompass the subject I'm trying to track. This should be good right here. Next, I'm going to click the Analyze button and wait until the analysis process finishes in the Jobs window. Once the job finishes, you can press play and see how well the green box follows your subject. In this instance, it did a great job. But I'm not going to lie to you, sometimes it has trouble tracking the subject. If that happens, go back to the filter and try one of the other algorithms in the drop down window. But because this one did a great job in tracking, I can move on to the next step. At this point, all we did was capture the tracking for this subject. What Shotcut did is record the keyframes of the movement of this subject. Because the keyframes have been recorded, we can then share those keyframes and allow another filter to leverage it. Note the name of the tracker it just created is called Tracker1. In this example, I'm going to add the simple text filter. So, while the video is selected, I'm going back to the Filter tab and look for Text Simple. Okay, I'm then going to add a text label, something like Person. So let me do that. 
I'm just going to change the formatting a bit so that it makes sense. Okay, I think I have the text where I want it to be. But right now, if I press play, nothing happens. The text stays static. First, we need to click the load keyframes from motion tracker button. Then a new window will pop up. First, I'm going to reference which tracker it should use, which is the previously saved tracker one. Then, in the Adjust window, I'm going to choose how I want the text filter to use the saved tracking. For this example, I'm going to choose Relative Position. But, later on, we can check out what the other adjustments do as well afterwards. Now, I'm going to choose if I want it tracked from the very beginning or just from this current position in the video. I'm going to choose from the start then click the Apply button. It's going to take a few moments to export the keyframes from the motion tracker into the text simple keyframes. Once it's done, you can see the keyframe button highlighted. And when you go to the keyframe tab, you should see a bunch of new keyframes added. Once you're happy with how the text is tracking the subject, go back to the motion tracker filter and uncheck the show preview box. Otherwise, you are going to see that green box on your video after you export. So let's give it a quick play. I think it did a pretty good job. Finally, let's export and see what the final results look like. Pretty cool, right? Earlier, I also promised to show what the other adjustment settings look like. So let's first clear the keyframes by clicking the stopwatch icon. Then let's click the load keyframes from Motion Tracker again. But this time, instead of relative position, we're going to choose offset position, then click apply. Let it process for a bit. So this is what that setting does. It looks like it does the opposite direction of what that previous settings did. Now let's try another choice. So once again, we're going to clear the keyframes by choosing that button. And then we're going to load keyframes from Motion Tracker. And then we've already chosen the first two. So now we're going to choose Absolute Position. Click Apply. Give it a second. Okay, now it's ready to go. Now let's see what it does. It looks like it just matches the center of the green box. Okay, so that's what that does. So once again, let's go ahead and go from the very beginning. Let's go ahead and clear the keyframes. And then let's load the motion tracker again. And then this time, let's choose the very last one, which is size and position. I'm going to click apply. Let it process for a minute. Okay, now it's done. Let's see what it does. Okay, it's kind of similar to the previous one, except the text box matches the green, the green box, the tracker box. And so that's pretty much it. That is using motion tracker paired with the text simple filter. If you have any additional questions, please just leave a comment below. Otherwise, 
Until next time, thank you for watching. I just wanted to remind you that if you haven't yet, go visit my channel. I'm sure you'll find tons of shotcut related videos. And don't forget to subscribe so that you know when I drop a new shotcut related tutorial. Every video on my channel was done on shotcut. So aside from examples of what shotcut can do, you can also visit my playlist of tips and tutorials all geared toward the beginner. Visit my Shotcut Tips and Tricks playlist and learn all the tips and tricks I've learned during my journey toward video editing. So once again, please subscribe and I'll see you next time.